Sarah asks, growing a poodle coat faster. Um, again, it's going to look thicker if you cut off those ends. Um, keeping it, I don't like to brush my poodles between baths. So even if I bath them twice a week, I'm not gonna brush in between because I find we're snapping off a little bit of hair no matter how careful we are. So that's gonna make it act like your dog's coat is growing faster. Some poodles do grow coat faster than others. Having them on a good food, I, you know, I have fed dogs raw, I fed them kibble. I do personally believe they need some kind of kibble or carb in there to help them grow coat. Again, I do have some coat recipes. There's lots of good supplements out there. Um, Super 14 is one that I have loved for a long, long time. So um, you could also email me and email me some photos and I could maybe see if I can identify the problem from photos. Angela asks, I have a silver standard poodle I've decided to put in continental. He has very thick and soft hair, except for the top knot is more coarse and accurate coat type. Is this normal and what might you suggest for a product? Yes, it is normal, um, especially in uh, silvers that the head and top knot area has more guard hair in it. Um, so I would try to just soften that coat just so that it doesn't snap off and keeps um, growing and the softer hair could be um, because they're also going through a coat change. Uh, you know, silvers take a long time to go through that coat change. I would condition the coarser hair with a product like Hy Hydro Pack and just really get it in there and get it nice and soft. Um, and I would use a clarifying shampoo on the softer coat and really just try to even blow dry in between baths that softer area to get out that undercoat. Um, Marita asks, would you wrap a breed like a Pomeranian? No, I would not wrap a Pomeranian. I would just keep um, their hair trimmed short to avoid the split ends. Um, Sophia. My miniature poodle has really thin, flowy hair, not as thick as other poodles. Do you have any gentle trips when trimming? Um, I have him in a T trim, which I guess a T60 is a T trim, without hair on the ears and tail. Um, yes, so I would, when I'm blow drying, so before I start, so I would towel him dry, I would spray him with bottoms up, diluted eight to one, and then I would towel dry that in again. Then I would use my force air dryer. As I'm force air drying, I would again spray in the bottoms up. Then as I'm hot drying, I would spray in the bottoms up. And then I would have bottoms up diluted 16 to one to use as my comb out brush out spray to really make the hair stand away. And or the very last when I am trimming and the so I'm assuming when you go to trim the miniature that the hair is falling when you hit it with the shears, I would use like thick and thicker aerosol spray because you can spray that in layers like layer combing it, but still it's combable and trimmable. So that makes the hair stand up on those thin and flowy hair dogs to make the trim look better. Um, so and I think we're just going to skip over anonymous if they don't want to have their name here. Uh, hi, Jen, you're welcome. So I'm glad that we could help you out. Um, Sarah, I have a white standard that I use for a grooming competition. She fluffs out nice in all parts except her neck hair. It will curl back up. Um, so I don't know what products you're using, Sarah. I would say it's curling because it's probably longer there. Um, also, maybe the way they carry their neck. Um, also, is the dog wearing a collar when it's not um, around you? Like, I don't know if it's your poodle or one that you borrow for grooming competitions, but if it's wearing a collar at all, surprisingly enough, some dogs can have like such sensitive skin or sensitive hair follicles that just the, um, just the actual act of the collar like sitting there as the hair is growing up actually creates like a dent in the hair. So I would make sure that it's not wearing any kind of collar at all. Um, maybe start drying that neck hair first and then also dry it last again if any other moisture gets in there like maybe you're drying the neck hair then when the head is up you know there is a little bit of water trickling down from gravity into that neck area. So try any or all of those and see how 
that works. Um, so somebody's asking, when you're talking about trimming out the sparse hair, you included Havanese on your list of dogs. I've been told you can only do around the feet in the sanitary area. Yes, I mean, for show that is true, but right now um, I would trim off any of that sparse hair, right? It has time to grow. So if it's looking sparse and thin, wherever there is thin hair, general rule, wherever there is thin hair on any breed, trimming it is going to make it look and come in thicker, right? So I would trim that thin hair with thinning shear on my Havanese because then it's going to come back in thicker and you're not going to get to a dog show for four or six weeks or maybe longer so it has time to grow out but it is going to grow out thicker. Um, Elaine asks, would you also use uh, water and moisturizer just to stop static on drop coats, i.e. American Cockers? Yes, I would. Um, I would also use plain old anti-stat that I that you use for people, right? Um, and the the anti-stat will definitely help. But yes, I would use H T. I would use water and moisturizer to stop static on drop coats if this doesn't help. By just plain old anti-stat that people use for their clothes. Um, Julie asks. Uh, what do you recommend for Papillon ear fringe care? So again, I recommend using a bristle brush. I am going to use some light conditioner or hydro pack and I am going to emulsify a very tiny bit. So like half a teaspoon between my fingers and I'm going to put it on the edges of their ear fringe. What I like to do with the ear fringe is the last thing they do when they come in at night. So it's 10 o'clock at night, they've gone out for their last pee, they come in, I'm gonna have the hydro pack right near a place that I can just put a little bit in my fingertips and just work it through that ear fringe so that they have all night just to sit there with that soaking into their ear fringe and I'm going to use that every day between baths. So I'm going to bath them once a week. I am going to make sure I use a lot of conditioner on that ear fringe. The other thing, especially for those fine coated breeds, leave the conditioner on there for 10 minutes, right? So 10 minutes is um, a good length of time to let the conditioner actually do it job, its job. So many people are putting the conditioner in and washing it out at the same time. Um, and you need to put it in, leave it in for 10 minutes, let it actually do its job. Allie asks, what products do you recommend for grooming a Shetland Sheepdog? So Allie, we do have a complete Shetland Sheepdog 101 course that has all these answers, um, but my favorite products are, I am going to use Clean Start because those double coated breeds and breeds that we chalk get you know a lot of dirt and debris in those coats. I am then going to use um, Thick and thicker, so I'm going to use them, bath them in, cl in clean start, rinse it out. I'm going to use thick and thicker volume response protein. I'm going to put like a tablespoon in my hands, work it in my hands till it's foamed up, and then I'm going to work it through the rough. I'm going to use another tablespoon, foam it up in my hands, work it through anywhere the hair is thin. Sometimes that's like the undercoat, sometimes like the underline. Sometimes it's the tail in the pants, always in the rough. You always need more of it in the rough, in the bib, wherever I need. Then I'm going to leave that in there for about 10 minutes. Then I'm going to rinse it out. Um, then when I'm drying them, I'm going to spray some bottoms up into their coat, diluted about eight to one. I'm going for show, I'm going to put mousse in all of those areas that the dog, dog is thin. So any kind of mousse will do. Um, I like to use coat dressing because I find it just gets in there really easily. And also to make the coat look thicker, you can add chalk as well and brush it in. Um, Carol asks, how do I deal with cowlicks that made it difficult for my Shelties top line? So Carol, a bunch of ways. First of all, I'm going to hold up that cowlick and I'm gonna rake underneath it with the coat king to make sure that there isn't excess undercoat underneath that cowlick making it stick up more. Um, then when I dry it, I'm going to pay special, special attention to that cowlick. So I might dry my Sheltie completely and then I might re-wet that cowlick and I might use like a round brush I might use like, you know, like a person's round brush or a slicker brush and really flip that cowlick in the opposite direction of how I need it to go. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is before I go into the ring, like once I've completely done my dog's um, show grooming, I'm going to have a towel that's been wet and like wrung out that I'm just going to place over top of that cowlick just to hold it in place. 
Um, April asks, what type of mousse do you use on Griffon furnishings? Um, I kind of use any kind of mousse. I kind of just use, I kind of have a favorite all the time. Um, I've used Volume Max I, from like Shoppers Drug Mart or somewhere like that. Um, I do, again, like the coat dressing just because it gets in everywhere. It's maybe not always stiff enough for some people. Thick and thicker mousse is a nice, good, stiff one. So, you know, now's the time to kind of test those out and see how that works for you. Um, Julie, what do you recommend for, oh, she's gone. Um, Jennifer, how do you deal with two different coat texture types? My party poodle is the worst. His black and his white are two different textures. Yes, uh, that is the problem. I have the same problem with like um, American, um, American cockers, English cockers, the black and the white or the black and the roan are always two different coat types. So <clears throat> what I would do is I would, okay, I'm losing my voice again. Okay, so what I would do, is I would bathe my dog. <clears throat> I would use after bath conditioner because it's a light conditioner. It's gonna cut down on your grooming time by 20 to 30%. Then I'm gonna have two different spray bottles, right? So I'm gonna have one with like a softening um, or just like a little bit of conditioner in it. And I'm gonna have one with a texturizing spray in it like bottoms up, right? So as I'm drying him, I'm going to use the two different sprays, right? So that's what I'm going to rely on to get the condition into those two different colors. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a bit more. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to use, I'm gonna have two different sprays going, right? So I'm gonna have one spray that um, has some texturizing in it for the softer coat and some that has like maybe just an ordinary conditioner. So either um, bottoms up for the softer and just maybe some more after bath for the other one just to try to match them up a little bit. Anne says, if I miss this, sorry, what about keeping setter furnishings in oil between baths? My Gordon tangles if you just breathe on it. So yes, Anne, what I would do is I would use um, like a little tiny bit of oil. Um, so I used to use um, like carry bath oil and I would use a lot of conditioner in a spray bottle. And I would just like every day you could put your Gordon up on the table and you could just spray the furnishings quite liberally with this mixture. So it's gonna be like in a regular size spray bottle, like maybe a tablespoon of oil. So like Neutrogena bath oil or um, maybe a teaspoon of baby oil. And then like, um, four or five tablespoons of a thicker conditioner like hydro pack and then the rest water use warm water in the beginning to help emulsify you're going to shake it up really good and every day pop that gordon up on the table and just spray through all of those trouble areas and brush with the pin brush being careful that you're not dragging the pin brush through the end of the coat right so you just want to get into all of those areas this is what will and i used to do with the iris setters put them up and the gordons put them up on the table every day and just use that kind of oil conditioner mix um, to to help stop that kind of tangling. Uh, Joan says, she's still trying to roll my Karen Terrier coat, but one thing is that he always has thicker, longer hair behind his jaws. I call them chops. Not sure if I include those in his round head. If I try and strip some out, I get a hole. If I include the chops in his head shape, it looks too big. So yes, Joan, anything in front of the leash line. So with the leash on your dog, anything in front, so I, from how I envision it, those would be his chops. I would include those in his round head. So just strip them out. Um, so what I would do is I wouldn't necessarily strip them out. I would wait, have my dog on his leash with the chops, his head all done up. So it's all back combed and sprayed and cholesterol, however you do it up. Then I'm gonna go in there with my fingers and I'm just gonna pull it out in that chop area till it looks big. This is going to take you quite a long time the first time, right? It is, Joan, because you haven't attempted it before. It's looking big, it's looking bulky and out of balance. And um, because it does look bulky and out of balance, it will take you a good look. So maybe not do it the first time. So maybe take, like I always tell people do it like, three different occasions. You have time. So do it this week, next week, and the week after. So go in, do your Karen's 
terrier's head up and go in there and pull out that hair in his chops just with your fingers not with a knife and just do it slowly right like pull out a bit of hair look pull out until you think you have it about halfway done then stop because the hair is going to resettle the undercoat's going to try to grow back in and then do the same the next week the idea behind doing it three different weeks is that then we we do start showing we always have a third of the hair perfect a third of the hair growing in and a third of the hair ready to come out so we can always keep that shape instead of just having it look good one time and not another time uh, kevin asks how do i handle the chaps on a lean burger so they are tidy but not cut. So Kevin, also getting back to the question that you emailed in because we forgot to put it on the slideshow this morning, for your um, uh, TT that you want in a puppy cut, you're going to want to have it completely brushed and combed out and then use clipper combs. So Julie might even tell you what clipper combs she uses on to get the look that you're looking for. She probably uses one of the longer ones if you like that really kind of plush puppy dog look. So I hope that helps you with that. And for this question, the chaps on your lean burger. Um, so are you talking about the pants at the back or on the sides? Um, so I would use the Coat King and then just use your thinning shears at the very end to just keep that tidy look. So I'm going to rake it out with the Coat King, really slicker it and dry it how I want it. And then I'm going to use my thinning shears just really, really lightly to create that really tidy line. And again, if it's looking too cut, go back in with your fingers and just um, pull out a little bit of hair with your fingers just to like soften up that cut looking line. I hope that makes sense. Anita, how best to remove undercoat on a Tibetan Terrier? Uh, so for undercoat, I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to basically line brush them. I'm going to use my slicker. Then I'm going to use my fine comb. And then I might even go in with a Coat King rake. And if you have a very, and just like rake out that undercoat, but as if you are line brushing it, like not going over top like we did with other breeds, but like you're line brushing it to get rid of that excess undercoat. Um, Mary, any tips for smooth scissor finish on a poodle? So Mary, um, basically the, 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 the scissor finish, um, it all is with the comb out. If your dog isn't properly combed out with a very fine tooth comb, you are never going to get the finish that other people do on their poodles. Um, so we do have a tutorial for this on YouTube that's free. We have Poodle Prep in the Dog Show Academy that will help you with this. Also, you could send me a short video on Facebook or something and, and I can help you with that. Um, Claudia asks, for double coats, do we trim the invisible hairs too? Uh, yes, I would for your collie. Right now I would. It has time to grow back in. So I would trim those invisible hairs. I always did it on my Shelties for downtime. So again, not what I'm going to do every week showing your collie because it's going to look too scissored. But if my dog had three weeks to a month off, I definitely would. Um, okay. Uh, we have one webcam request and yeah. we're on. So Sorry, Katie, do you want to do that to, now? Do you know how to set that up? Yeah, but I need you to do it as the host. Um, okay. I'm just going to answer um, these two questions that are on my screen and then I'll do the webcam. Okay. So Nancy Top, any tips on shear and thinner maintenance? Yes, keep them clean. Keep them in cases. Um, I have to tell you, my very first pair of guide thinning shears, I paid a lot of money for them when I was broke. And they were wonderful. And when they finally did die, Whitman's completely re-bit them for me, like re-put the tines in my thinning shears. And they, so a, a reg I would rather that you only had your scissors sharpened two or three times a year by somebody who was fabulous than, than more often by somebody that wasn't fabulous, even if you have to send them away. Keep them clean, only use them on clean hair whenever possible, and keep them in a case. 
And the last question, Q&A question I'm going to do right now is Nancy Bitters, my English Springer Spaniel bitch has very thick pants. Best way to trim or thin? I've used a Mars Coat King to thin with success, but I'm eager to hear your thoughts. Yes, I would definitely use the Coat King uh, would be my first go-to, especially if you did have success with it. And just always keeping after it with a fine tooth comb at the end of your bath and blow dry. Okay, so we've hit two o'clock. I would love to go on forever. My voice is leaving me. I am going to try and do this one live webcam so everybody can stay on so they can see it. Um, I will, we are going, this was recorded. I am going to send the recording out to everyone. I will try to get to these questions that we have in the Q&A on the recording. And because of the overwhelming response, more than 500 people wanting to get back on, um, you know, I think we're going to try to put a survey on or send you also out a survey um, to see how we can make this better. This was our, our first one. And if people do want more of this. All right. So thank you all. This was like overwhelming for me, just like to have all these questions come in. It meant a lot to me that you even asked me these questions. I loved every minute of it. I'm going to try to get to this one webcam. Um, and Karen says, uh, moose, um, yeah, just, you have to play around with the moose that you like, right? So thick and thicker is a very thick moose. Um, I know that Will uses typically Volumax that he buys from Shoppers Drug Mart. That's what kind he uses. So I think that would have been Anne's question. Okay, Katie, tell me what to do. Okay, so um, if you go up to the top right, it says participants and then attendees. Oh, it doesn't online. Okay, yeah, I, okay, I'm there. Yep, so then you can search for Roy. And Roy, are you yeah. ready to go? I don't think your chat is necessarily working, but if you can type it in the Q&A. Was this for a webcam? So I just promoted him to panelist. Yeah. Everybody can see this is <laughs> so I don't know maybe he didn't. did you did you promote I, I did. can't yeah. see it yeah me either okay I'm still seeing in attendees okay can you just switch between yeah I'm gonna try one more time so it's Roy Wilhelmson right yeah and I'm gonna allow him to talk. Oh, okay, so I have to promote him to a panelist. And it says that he will be rejoining the webinar as a panelist. Okay. Um, but when I switch it, it also said that he has an older version of Zoom, which is why one of the things that I tried to do wouldn't work. Okay, um, but you have promoted him, and so that should have sent a request. Okay, so Roy. So Roy, if you can hear us, accept the request. Um, Hopefully that works. Al, do you want to maybe do like five minutes, go through the Q&As, see if Roy can get on, and then if not, we'll get in touch with him after? Yep. So, yeah, right. I'm going to go back to the Q&A and just see if we can figure out this webcam thing. If not, we will uh, maybe do a FaceTime or a Skype with Roy at a later time, just because I would hate for anybody to be disappointed. Okay. Uh, so, Julie, what products do you recommend for Papillon Ear Fringe Care? So I'm going to use, um, I think we covered this, but I am going to use the day-to-day -day shampoo and conditioner, and I like the Hydro Pack at night um, for, to promote that growth. Uh, Lindsay Barrows, are there different sizes, types of Coke King rakes? If so, how do I know which is appropriate for my breed's coat type? So Lindsay, yes, there are. There's Coat King and they have ones that have like quite a wide rake and quite a narrow, so that's the actual size of the rake head. Um, and the, so they also come in like fine, medium and coarse. I personally use the coarse 90% of the time because it does, it takes out most of the undercoat without cutting the coat. Um, and you know, you, I've never really had a lot of success with the fine rake. Um, so I would start with the coarse 
So, you know, make the size of the rake head, obviously you want a smaller one than the one I use. Um, but when it comes to how close the actual tines are together, I would start with the course. Um, Sandy with miniature schnauzers, are there products for bathing and conditioning the best for my guys as well? Yes, um, on the legs, I would definitely use a clean start and then a product like after bath or the day-to-day -day conditioner would be great. Um, Allie says, what brushes are best for grooming Shetland Sheepdogs? Um, I like the medium sized Big G Slicker. Um, it gets lots of volume, gets the undercoat out really, really easily. I also use a fusion type pin brush and I like the 27 millimeter pin um, because it does a good job. I find the shorter pin doesn't always do a good job on the longer coat. Um, I'm going to scroll down. Um, Louise, what best brushing spray for a wavy Portuguese water dog? I like the Jet Just Divine, but again, if you don't want to buy a separate brushing spray, whatever conditioner you're used, mixed um, like about 10 to 1 in water in a spray bottle um, also helps with those wavy coats. You don't really, you know, you're not dealing with a curly, so it's just going to cut down on the static and just ease of brushing will really help you. Um, Lindsay, what is your opinion on using a slicker brush on a drop coated breed? I've always been told it will break the coat, but I find that a slicker gets the best hair separation and the look I'm wanting. Lindsay, I think that you're exactly right. Um, so what I recommend for drop coated breeds, which is what I recommend for poodle ears, is I'm going to dry the ear or brush it out 90%. So if I'm drying them, I'm gonna dry them 90% with my pin brush and do the last 10% with the slicker. That way I've already gotten out anything that might break. And it's also, you know, it's, we recommend that we don't use slickers for those people that are just starting out, right? Um, if you know what you're doing, a slicker is going to be fine. I've seen people do more damage and cause more breakage using a print brush than somebody that knows how to use a slicker brush properly. But if you, you are understanding that the slicker with the, the bristles closer together does get the look that you want. So use it for the last 10% of your grooming. Are you there, Katie? Yep, it looks like we have Roy on as well. Yes. Hi, Roy. Hi, Roy. Hi. Do, you hear, do you hear me? <laughs> I hear you, but I can't see. Yeah. Okay, no. so Allison, yeah. if you go to the panelist mode, um, if you can hover over Roy's name and allow the um, the webcam, or alternatively, if you can do like all panelists on or something. Yeah, I I when I hover over it, it it does um, that thing. It does that thing. Okay, so if you could go to allow all panelists, do you remember when we did that with Lori? Yep. Okay, and then I can just like turn my own off. It's fine. Okay, so I think I did. All right, Roy, we're trying to get ready to put your uh, camera on. Uh, yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, like I clicked on him. Yeah, but if you can do. So if you could do all panelists. Yep. And, and have you enabled that? It says all panelists at the bottom, but. Um, Great, okay, so Roy. Yes. If you can, you should be able to see um, an icon somewhere of a video camera that probably has a red line through it. If you yes, can click I that to, can you click that to start video? Yes. Okay. See. Start video. You can start your video because the host has stopped it. Okay. Yeah. Say. So, yeah. So, just a second, Allison. We'll just need you to. Uh, maybe in video settings. Sorry, everyone. I swear we've practiced this. Yeah. When I get video, all I, all I see is me. Okay. Um, Touch up. 
Is it still doing that hover over thing when you? Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We did practice, honestly. We did. If you go to the bottom and there's the more. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is it working there? No, like uh, like on mine, it, it just has a totally different, just says live on Facebook, blah, blah. Okay. Or start or stop. If you go up to the, t okay. Um, we'll just try one last thing. If you go up to the top, Allison, and you hover over Roy's name and there should be the blue square with the yeah. three dots. Can you yeah. click on that? And are there any options? Mute audio chat, make host, change role to attendee, remove, rename, hide. Of course. Okay. If you don't have anything else, then maybe we will set something up with Roy afterwards. Yeah, it's just frustrating that this wouldn't work. I know. We made it work before. All right. We'll set up some. Roy, we'll do something for you. Good. We're sorry. Thank you. Okay. I have that written down, so. Okay. So, sorry, Roy. And we did get, honestly, everybody with your webcam, we did practice this yesterday with a friend of mine that was social isolating, and we <laughs> figured out how to make it work, but I guess I needed to write it down. Sorry, Roy, but I'll set up a Skype or a FaceTime call with you and help you out. Um, yes. So, yeah. Uh, we're at the two hour and 12 minute mark. And like I said, I like thank everyone so much for participating. You will get um, a copy of this recording that you can access. And we will ask you if, you know, if it's something you would like to participate in again. I know we did have more than 500 people. We had to turn some people away today, but that's how that goes. Um, don't forget to check out, you know, when you get this recording, the distributors that might be in your area that you can get some of the products we recommended from just because, you know, they supported us. I'd like to support them um, as well. Don't forget, I have everything that I've talked about is in a lot of our courses on Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and I'm happy to give everyone here today a 35% discount um, as well. Uh, anytime you want a coaching session, you want to send me photos, let me know. You'll be sent a copy of these slides, the distributor contact info, and a recording of this webinar fairly shortly. Um, stay in touch. Let us know what you thought. Uh, you know, everybody send out some world love out there. Stay safe. Um, stay home if you can. And let's all do our part. But love you all. Thank you so much for showing up. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give us a like. And if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel below. Also, check out leadingedgedogshowacademy.com for our premium content. We had a lot of fun bringing you all this information. See you soon. Bye.